Today we visit the city of Calle, on the eastern central region of Puerto Rico. We'll visit La Parroquia de Nuestra Señora de la Asunción, a Roman Catholic parish church built in 1815, the old city hall building, the Ramon Frade Square and Banshell, the monument to the Puerto Rican peasant, that's El Monumento al Jíbaro Puerto Riqueño, the beautiful Tetas de Calle, a pair of mountain peaks located on La Sierra de Calle, the world famous Guavate restaurant area, and El Charco Azul, a wonderful swimming hole that's actually blue, like the name suggests. Getting to Calle is easy, but I'm not gonna bore you with the blow-by-blow -blow details. If you're coming from the Isla Verde, Condado, or Old San Juan areas, just punch in the coordinates on screen and make sure to get off the expressway on exit 39, and your GPS will take you straight to the Ramon Frade Square in the center of town. As always, our first visit was to the Nuestra Señora de la Asunción Parish, located right next to the Frade Square. It's a beautiful 19th century temple painted in blue. When we got there, it was 8 in the morning, and the priest was about to start the morning mass, so we waited over an hour to enter the temple. In 2016, the city of Calle rebuilt the Ramon Frade Square, and they found over 500 burials in front of the present temple, along with the original foundations of the 18th century hermitage. The original remains were relocated to an adjacent lot to preserve their dignity and integrity, and replicas were put in their place to create an open-air exhibit. We took a moment to explore the area while Mass was conducted inside. The Nuestra Señora de la Asunción Parish is a beautiful temple that looks like something straight out of Europe, and like most Catholic churches in Puerto Rico, it's well-maintained, bright, and interesting. In fact, I've been told that there are actually tourists that go around the world exploring old churches, and the ones that they find in Puerto Rico are among the most interesting in all America. As we left the temple, we went for a stroll along the Ramon Frade Square. Ramon Frade de Leon was a Puerto Rican visual artist and architect who lived between the years 1875 and 1954. His realist painting style captured the lifestyle of the early 20th century Puerto Rican. There's also a museum with most of his iconic paintings at the nearby campus of the University of Puerto Rico, but it was closed the day that we visited town. Finally, the band shell on the south end of the square is decorated with a portrait of Frade as well as many of his most famous paintings. Around the square, there are small cafes and tables where you can relax and watch life go by. On the far northwestern corner of the square, on the corner of Núñez Romeo and Luis Muñoz Rivera, is a gray and white building that was once the original town hall or alcaldía. Like most Puerto Rican towns, Calle also followed the Spanish tradition of building the Catholic church on the eastern side of the town square and city hall on the opposite end. Today, City Hall is at another location. As we left the center of town, we retraced our steps back to exit 39 and headed south along Toll Road 52 towards El Monumento al Jíbaro Puerto Riqueño.
A friend of mine, who's quite cynical, once told me that monuments are built for dead things. And I guess he was right since you rarely see monuments dedicated to living people. I guess the Beatles would be the one contradiction to that belief. In any case, in Puerto Rico, the jíbaro was the peasant worker who did mostly menial and agricultural labor. They were also the less educated and most economically deprived. Well, 21st century Puerto Rico hardly has any jíbaros. Today, even the most ignorant and economically deprived on the island have iPhones, internet hookups, and satellite TV. Not that they're better off, they just think that they are. The Monumento al Jíbaro Puerto Ricano was my first surprise of the trip. It used to be that there was a large parking area next to the statue where people would stop, walk to the base of the statue, and take in the view of the beautiful Tetas de Calle right behind it. In case you're wondering, the Tetas de Calle got that name for the same reason that the Grand Teton mountain range in the great state of Wyoming got theirs. If you're not aware of that story, just go to Google and search for how did the Grand Teton get its name. The funny thing, however, is that according to local experts, neither peak is actually in Calle. Some say that one is in the nearby town of Salinas and the other one is in Coamo. Others say that they're both in Salinas. Another fact is that like real breasts, they're not exactly the same size. The western one is 65 feet taller, standing at a full 2,759 feet above sea level. Finally, the actual reason why they'll always be called Las Tetas de Calle is because they're also located on La Sierra de Calle, the mountainous region that divides the eastern portion of Puerto Rico north to south. Oh, and in case you're wondering, their real name is Las Piedras de Collado. As for the Monumento al Jíbaro, it's another sad example of how Puerto Rico's government has abandoned public spaces and recreation areas. There's no longer any parking area, so if you decide to visit, you'll have to park on the shoulder of PR-52, which is outright dangerous. To get to the monument itself, you'll have to walk around a tall fence until you find an opening close to the rear on the eastern side. Then, you'll have to walk over tall grass and stay clear of the many ant piles along the way. Finally, you'll arrive at a monument that clearly hasn't been tended to in years. What a sad way to honor the island's peasant workers, don't you think? As we left the Monumento al Jíbaro, we still had two more places on our list. One was the world-famous Guavate restaurant area, and the other was Charco Azul, a beautiful swimming hole that's actually in the neighboring town of Patillas. However, the easiest way to get there is along Road 184 that goes by the restaurant area. So we decided to visit Charco Azul first, and then have some roasted pig and a couple of cold ones on our way back. To get to Charco Azul, you'll have to do some walking through the Carite Forest, a natural preserve that once again hasn't had some tender loving care from the government in years. The actual distance is about half a mile each way along mostly flat terrain. tell that the place is abandoned from the minute you get there. The gate is broken, the picnic facilities are abandoned and covered in graffiti, there are no restrooms, and the vegetation is overgrown. The trail is mostly intact, with a few areas that have been destroyed by mudslides. 
My wife and I decided to leave our Pathfinder out on the road as we had no idea what we would find. Surprisingly, the few people that we did find along the way were not from the island. One couple was from the continental United States and the other small group was from Latin America. I wonder what those people wrote about this place on Yelp.
We finally reached Charco Azul about half an hour later, walking at a comfortable pace. The temperature that day was around 108 degrees Fahrenheit, so believe me, we were tempted to jump right in. But that wasn't why I was there, so I took my pictures, my footage, and headed back. Charco Azul lives up to its name. It's actually blue. Albeit the water wasn't as clear after a couple of rainy days. The pond is about 30 to 50 feet across and it seems to be quite shallow along the edges. However, in my research I found that the blue area can reach a depth of 15 feet, so if you don't know how to swim, stay away. There's also a rock where the locals jump into the deep end, but I'd steer clear of it. In any case, Puerto Rico by GPS and or any of its representatives that includes me, of course, assume no responsibility for your safety and or your well-being when visiting any of the places covered in our videos. So use common sense. Oh, and just so you know, there's no cell coverage in this area. To get back to civilization, just retrace Road 184 heading north and you'll end up at the Guavate restaurant area. Guavate is known for roasted pig. It's done in the traditional Puerto Rican way whole, on a stick, over open flames, and slowly cooked for around 8 to 10 hours. Then it's cut up into portions using a razor sharp machete and served with all sorts of Puerto Rican side dishes. These can be yellow rice with pigeon peas and small chunks of pork, yuca, blood sausage, ripe plantains, and many other local delicacies. And of course, to wash it all down, you can have a variety of adult beverages, an ice cold beer, or several, or just a regular soda or fruit juice. You can enjoy it all right on the spot, or get it to go like we did. There are several dozen restaurants along Road 184, and like anywhere else in the world, they can vary in terms of quality. So what can I say? Do what we do. Look for those with the most patrons. After all, they're full for a reason. To return to the San Juan Metroplex, just take PR52 going north and follow it to the end. You'll end up at the Minillas Tunnel. Or better yet, do what I always do when I travel abroad. Write down the GPS coordinates to your hotel before you leave in the morning. That way you'll always have a point of return. And of course, if you're visiting old San Juan, save yourself the hassle of traditional city tours. They're expensive, and you'll be herded along with people that won't necessarily share your interests. Instead, order the Old San Juan walking tour. It's packed with useful information about all the main attractions, as well as every GPS coordinate and two hours of exclusive online video. That way, you'll be able to visit before you visit and hit the ground running when you arrive in the old city. See you next time! <laughs>